Hi everyone, Kate here to tell you about the books I am planning on reading in the month of December in honor of Cloak and Dagger Christmas that I am co-hosting along with Janelle from Too Fond of Books, Kate from The Novel Nomad, and Carolyn from Carolyn's Reading Rambles. Let's get into the books. The prompts that we are doing, the optional prompts, if you are so inclined, are clue themed. So one prompt for each of the nine rooms and we have different levels. So if you feel really kind of in the mood for mysteries and you want to go all out, you could do all nine prompts and that is the Sherlock Holmes level. But if you're feeling maybe not quite as ambitious and you want to just stick with six of the prompts, then that is the police detective level. And then if you're feeling you want to go very light, this year has been a year and you just want to read what you want to read and not worry about uh, doing many of the prompts, but three of them, that is the amateur sleuth level. And if you just don't want to do any of the prompts and you just want to read a mystery in the month, then that totally counts as participating. But I am going all out for myself. So for study, which is the first prompt, and it's you know something you would have wanted to study in college if you could, or something you have, and just something you're interested in. And I am interested in food. <laughs> I really have enjoyed in the past few years kind of branching out with what I cook and trying different techniques, using new ingredients. I've done, and I'm kind of in the middle of, a like cooking around the world project. So um, I found this book, I was in an independent mystery bookshop. Um, and I found John Saturnell's Feast by Lawrence Norfolk. I love this cover. And I was browsing and the owner of the shop, who's very knowledgeable um, about mysteries, she said, oh, that's an excellent book when she saw me pick it up. And it's a standalone. So that's nice sometimes with mysteries. If you don't feel like investing in an entirely new series, I think this could be kind of the ticket. And it's set very interesting time. England, 1625. Um, and in the remote village of Buckland, John and his mother are running for their for their lives. They are accused of witchcraft. Um, and he knows how to kind of make food out of nothing. Uh, she knows him. Uh, sorry, she teaches him how to forage. Um, so peppery watercress from the edges of marshy puddles, clover petals, mallow seeds, sweet blackberries and wild carrots. Um, and she tells her son of an ancient feast kept in secret down the generations. Um, and his mother ends up passing away. This is right in the dust jacket. So I think that happens right at the beginning. Um, and he becomes uh, from the squall, he rises from the squalor of the scullery to the great house above. And so he has all of these elaborate creations. And then what I love too, if I can find for you, yes, there's a great um, kind of wood uh wood block illustration at the beginning of each chapter so the lady also uh the you know owner of the store said there are some great food descriptions in here and just sounds wonderful so that's one um i get intimidated by the like chunkiness of it so i think i want to start that one right at the beginning of the month when i have tons of cloak and dagger christmas energy um then things in glass jars by jess kidd i forgot to say this is for the library prompt so a book involving books or borrow a book from the library i'm going to be borrowing a book from the library but this is really like loose because i'm going to do the audiobook through the library i guess i could check out the physical book also, but Things in Jars by Jess Kidd. I did not realize this was a detective mystery. I heard a lot of like literary fiction booktubers talk about it, but it is a detective mystery. And I am really curious. It's set during the Victorian era. I don't know much else and I don't want to know much else going in blind. So sorry if that's not a very interesting kind of hook for you if you're watching and you didn't know about it. The next prompt is Hall, and this is your entry into a new mystery subgenre or mystery author or new series. So I have two books that I want to try. There are so many detective series I want to try, but as we know, this is the story of my life. If you've been watching my channel, I just continually start new detective series and I don't complete any. So <laughs> I'm limiting myself to only two. Um, and the first is comes as a recommendation from the lovely, lovely Megan Hannett. And she said she thought I would like this since I liked um, 
the Maisie Dobbs series. And this is the Maggie Hope series by Susan Elia McNeil. Mr. Churchill's secretary is the very first in this one. And it's London, 1940. The threat of a blitz looms. And um, the newest typist at uh, number 10 Downing Street. So I'll be really curious about the um, interpretation of Winston Churchill in this. Uh, and the bit of the crown that I have watched, um, he's very tempestuous. Um, and I, I think he was. He was known for being that way. Um, and uh, an air raid siren sends multitudes underground. Access to the war rooms also exposes Maggie to the ma machin machination machinations. Oh, I can't talk today, of a menacing faction determined to do whatever it takes to change the course of history. So for those of you that have watched Foyle's War, the detective series, this basically sounds like a book version of Foyle's War, and I am on board with that. Uh, and then another recommendation uh, that comes from Rebecca at The Book Nester, and I think she's on Instagram as uh, Rivercrest Cottage, I think, and it is Bruno, Chief of Police, by Martin Walker. This is a series that takes place in southern France, and it's supposed to also have all of the food love. So you may be getting some Cloak and Dagger Christmas cooking videos if I read this and just want to make all of the French food, because I do. There are several French dishes that are like, Mwah! I just love them. Coque au vin being my favorite. And then there's this amazing bean dish, and I can't remember the name of it. I've never made it, and I long to make it. Um, Anyhow, I digress. You can tell I like food. Um, yes, so Benoit Courget, a.k.a. Bruno. Um, he's a policeman in the small village in the south of France. He's a former soldier, lives in a quiet village, and I love the small town kind of vibe to it. Yes, it will be great. Okay, then for Billiard Room, next numbered book in a series. So I have eight books here. I'm not going to get to all of them, but I basically wrote down the eight detective series that like, oh yes, I want to read the next one in that. I'm going to put all the audiobooks on hold for the ones that I can get as audiobooks and just whichever ones come in first, whatever I have time for. Not going to put pressure on myself. This is for fun, you know, kind of like an advent type thing. So first, and this one definitely will be happening because it is called Kissing Christmas Goodbye. It is an Agatha Raisin that is Christmas themed. You can bet I will be fitting this in this month. Um, it's really frustrating for me to talk about later books and detective series because some really interesting things happened in the most recent Agatha Raisin book that I read. And I want to know what is going to happen with that in the 18th book in the series. Um, then Journey to Munich. This is the 11th Maisie Dobbs book. Again, crazy things happened in the last one. I want to know what's going to happen. We're rolling into kind of, there are whispers and rumblings about World War II. Um, I just cannot imagine kind of the despair you would feel if you had survived through World War I, had served in World War I, and then there's this period of peace and then World War II kind of rolls around. I I cannot imagine. Um, so Journey to Munich, I do have to be ready for these emotionally because they really, there's an ache to the series, but I, I love it because they make me feel deeply. Then Kingdom of the Blind. This is the 14th Armand Gamache book. I only have three left in this series, but Louise Penny keeps releasing one, typically one a year. Um, and uh, again, late in the series. Can't tell you much. I really want to read it. Uh, then The Haunted Season by G.M. Mallier. This is the fifth in the Max Tudor mystery series. Max Tudor is a former MI5 investigator, and he now lives in the town of Nether Monkslip and is a vicar. Uh, so you can see interesting things will happen then if uh, you know he is summoned to investigate cases, but also fulfill his vicar duties. Uh, then Dressed for Death. This is the Commissario Brunetti uh, series. This would be the third in the series by Donna Leone, and it's set in Venice. It is wonderful. Treads the line between cozy and literary. It is fabulous. Um, I read the first one for Cloak and Dagger Christmas last year, was swept away by it, just utterly blown away, and um, am currently reading the second one right now. And then Dark Fire. This is the second in the Matthew Shardlake series by C.J. Sansom. This is set in Tudor, England, and he is a, oh, I always get the order mixed up. 
he's a former monk who is a lawyer or he is a former lawyer who is a monk. I'm sure I'll get people in the comments telling me which one it is. Um, so I read the first one a long time ago and then I had the mystery book slump of 2019. So hadn't gotten to it again and I want to continue with that series. Um, then A Medal for Murder. This is the second in the Kate Shackleton series and it's set, I think it's kind of like golden age era type setting, or maybe it's the forties. I'm going to put it in the description. I'll look it up later. Uh, I did not like the first one in this and Mel from Mel's Bookland Adventures has confidently assured me that the first one is not good and they all get much better after that. So I'm going to try again with the Kate Shackleton series. Now I have access to the audiobooks for most of them. So I feel even more motivated. There's nothing like a mystery audiobook. Am I right? Um, so yes. Then An Act of Villainy. This is the fifth in the Amory Ames series by Ashley Weaver. This is definitely golden age setting. Uh, Amory and her husband Milo uh, are at a, this involves the theater in this one. I very hit or miss because I think a lot of times like the stereotypes that they have for characters in the theater, I'm just so like disgusted by their choices for their personal life. Um, they're very like laissez-faire about uh, fidelity and just kind of selfish, honestly. <laughs> that is like the stereotype of actors and actresses. Um, anyhow, all to say, I want to read the next day, Marie Ames. Um, okay. Then we move on to conservatory and um, I have two on here that I'm equally excited for. And the first is the summer country by Lauren Willig. And this is a very like Susanna Kearsley, Mary Stewart type plot. And I am here for it. The romantic mysteries I just love. So uh, a woman, I think she inherits a plantation in Barbados and goes back there. And there are lots of family secrets I don't know if there's slavery on the plantation. I'm really curious how Lauren Willig will like deal with that um, in this. And um, we shall see. And then The Night of 400 Rabbits by Elizabeth Peters. The title cracks me up. Um, and this is set in Mexico and it's right around Christmas time. I don't know how cozy it will be, but I love the idea that it's set around Christmas time. This young woman um, gets a letter from her father and she goes to travel to Mexico and kind of figure out things and the, you know, sort of the secrets. And, and again, I did not realize Elizabeth Peters had written novels of romantic suspense. And I was so excited when I realized, plus there's an audiobook of this. And I really want to read because I just love the, um, you know, Susanna Kearsley, Mary Stewart, Phyllis Whitney. Um, and who else was I thinking of? Lucinda Riley, like, that whole crew, like I'm so here for those kinds of books. Um, and then for kitchen, which is food based ones or um, kind of the kitchen is the heart of the home. So a small town mystery, uh, several on there. The um, Bruno chief of police is a small town mystery. Um, John Saturnow's feast involves food and then kissing Christmas goodbye, the Agatha Raisin one, um, all qualify for that prompt. And then dining room, which is a closed circle mystery. And I have several for this. First is The Lodger by Marie Bullock Lowndes. This was published in 1913 and it sounds so haunting. Again, another audiobook. You can tell I'm very excited about audiobooks. Also, it's going to be after we've moved and I feel like I'm going to need audiobooks to carry me through this month because I'm going to want, you know, to read, but physical reading might, I might find it challenging. Anyhow, um, Hitchcock made a movie out of this and there's basically this couple that um, take in a lodger in their house. I'm not sure if they have a boarding house or they have a house and they just decide to take in a lodger. They take in this lodger and right around this time, this is in London, the Jack the Ripper killings start and I think they slowly but surely realize like they are housing a serial killer. If this was written like nowadays, I would stay far away. But since it's written in 1913, I feel like maybe I'll be brave enough for it. It just sounds so haunting. And the audiobook narrator for this sounds amazing. Um, so I'm going to try it. Maybe I'll just read it in broad daylight. <laughs> um, and then I found a couple like Christmas 
setting ones that I'm excited for. And the first one is Murder on a Mystery Tour by Marion Babson. There's a group of people traveling together and they stop at this beautiful mansion. I can't remember what country this one is set in. I've done so many like mystery book research sessions that are all starting to blur together. Like all of the books that I wanted to read for this. Um, and it just sounds fabulous. There's going to be, I'm sure, some really despicable characters. And you're just going to try to figure out who killed whom in this mystery. Uh, the next prompt is lounge or, uh, you know, golden age mystery. And so I have um, an act of villainy, the Amory Ames one. If I get to that, that would qualify for the golden age crime. Then uh, Dumb Witness by Agatha Christie. If I get through the Poro, I was hoping to read this month, then the next one in the lineup would be Dumb Witness. And in this one, I've seen the TV episode of it. There's a dog who has witnessed the crime and Poro has a hunch that the dog might be able to help him figure out who committed the crime. And people think he's crazy, of course, but he's Poirot, so he's going to get the job done. Um, then The Red House Mystery by A.A. A. Milne. This comes highly recommended by Mel from Mel's Bookland Adventures, former co-host of Cloak and Dagger Christmas. Hopefully she'll be back with us again next year. Um, but The Red House Mystery, um, I've just heard, is a really, really great uh, closed circle mystery also, but Golden Age one written in 1922, I'm pretty sure is when it was published. The only mystery he ever wrote, A.A. A. Milne of Winnie the Pooh fame, also wrote this. Um, and I really want to read it. And lastly, is it lastly? No, penultimate prompt. Um, no, lastly, I don't know where my head is today. So ballroom, and we just said something involving a party. And so two more cozy Christmas ones that I have. The 12 Days at Bleakley Manor by Michelle Greep. Um, I think this is set in the Victorian era. Again, I've done so, so much research. And then Murder at an Irish Christmas by Carlene O'Connor. I'm hoping there's a fabulous Irish accent in this audiobook narration. Oh, so those are all of the mysteries. And then I will add... I am also planning on dipping in and out of the um, big book of Christmas mysteries compiled by Otto Penzler. This is a really fun tradition I have now because it's very low key. I read three or four short stories out of this collection that's gargantuan. I think it's like 800 pages or something. And so it's really fun. Like I said, low key, just read a few when I feel like it. Um, and then I also will be reading Christmas Bells by Jennifer Ciervini. Um, this is for my Literary Parlor uh, online book club, and I will link that down below if you are interested. It's about the history of um, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow's writing the poem Christmas Bells, which turned into the Christmas Carol, I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day. And then I did find an M.C. Beaton audiobook that's one of her romances called Miss Davenport's Christmas, where there are women that are Puritans, and then they decide they're going to rebel and celebrate Christmas in style um, and wear like color and let their hair show. And it just sounds amazing. So I definitely want to read that. All right. I've gone on long enough. Is my TBR realistic? No, it is not. Am I going to have fun? Yes, I am. Hopefully I will get through at least half of those. So thank you for watching. Please let me know if you are joining in Cloak and Dagger Christmas, and I will be back with another video soon. Bye.